Hey, good morning, guys. So, I've been uh, running around like a crazy man here the last couple days, but I really need to get these seeds started because if I plan on eating some um, butter crunch lettuce and some uh, Genovese um, basil, um, I basically will need to get this uh, up and running as soon as possible. So I went ahead and used the Jiffy Peat palettes, and uh, they are pretty moist here. Um, not too moist, but overly uh, not overly moist, but uh, pretty good here. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, I'll go ahead and um, just work on this pack here. <clears throat> And I have these Genovese seeds. I don't actually need this toothpick today. I mean, these seeds are kind of small, but let's just go ahead and put them in my hand. And I'll put at least two, probably three. Actually, I do. Maybe I will need the toothpick here. Um, so the goal here is to at least put two in each of the pods. Oh crap. See, never worked perfectly. Um, I can't even see that very well. So I'm going to go ahead and put two of these pods into each um, Jiffy Peat pellet and stick it in there. I've done a lot of different methods. Uh, some I like better than others. Some are time issue, uh, convenience. Some are more cumbersome. Some work better than others. I think a lot of stuff you need to try yourself and I'll be honest um, on this particular growth here in Thailand I'm actually gonna put some of these once they start growing I'm gonna put some of these in different spots I don't know what's a good sweet spot for it to grow without it drying out I'm not sure exactly if the Sun is too strong here at times I'm a little bit fearful of what's going to happen once these things start growing if they're going to hit a wall in terms of being successful uh, if they're getting too much direct sunlight I'm also worried about what might happen um, if it uh, is in a windy area um, and then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put some in direct sunlight I'm going to put some in partial shade and then I'll go ahead and put some uh, in a non-drafty windy area but that uh, gets some morning sunlight so I've got a couple different spots here I'll show you the spots I'm thinking about once I get these seeds planted so let's get rolling here I don't want to have any seeds left over so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and just get at least two of them in there per pod and then just see how it turns out. And just FYI, I'm on the 14th floor. And so we get a pretty darn good breeze through here sometimes. And then other times, you know, of course, we get a no wind at all and it's just dead up here. But um, do get some quite a bit of breeze here up here. So you got to be monitoring what kind of container and how your these things are growing because these pods could easily dry out on you. GFP pellets can actually really dry out dry out on you. Uh, if it doesn't have some sort of lip or some area to uh, to protect itself from all the air that's circulating through here and then on the flip side of that uh, you don't want to have a situation where um, where you end up um, <clears throat> crap, get more, more seeds here let's just get one more in each of these just so we're doubling up and then I don't want to be in a situation where it's 
too fully enclosed and then I have a situation where uh, it's a hot day up here and it's sweltering up here and then all of a sudden um, it's baking these pods. Uh, I never had a problem when I was back in the Pacific Northwest because I was on, in zone 8B and it was typically never so hot but to the point where that it was cooking up these uh, GVP pellets. But being in Thailand, although we have a, it's funny when I landed here, we had a cold front that came in here. So we were in the low 80s and at night it was actually in the low 70s. And low 70s for Thai people is freezing. I've never seen so many people wear, so many Thais wearing so many jackets other than when I was up in Chiang Mai one time. I remember being up in Chiang Mai on a business trip with a colleague of mine. And it was our first time up in Chiang Mai and we saw all these ties were uh, wearing these parka jackets and uh, they were taking these selfies and we were just kind of like looking around and when we first looked at it we were like uh what's going on here why are they taking is there some sort of holiday are they taking why are they taking so many photos and then we realized they're not used to wearing a jacket all the time and so they wanted to uh, take a bunch of photos of them wearing their jackets that uh, they didn't have and it was so funny because i had um, needed to get a um a little windbreaker and uh, some uh, hiking shoes and for an event out there and um, and we went over to the local I think it was the big C and the area that they had it was a small area where they sold the shoes there was there was or uh, uh, they were selling the, um, the jackets and the coats and it was just crazy to see that uh, they literally were completely sold out of uh, of, of um, jackets and uh, coats. I mean, they, first of all, they don't stock too many to begin with. And then the fact that uh, they had that whole area was completely bare bones. It was so funny. So this is the basil lettuce leaf. And as you guys all know, I love this stuff. The leaf is so nice and big and um it's it's it has a milder taste than some of the other basils and that's why i can use it more for like a lettuce wrap which i just absolutely love and so um i'll go ahead and um, grow that and i'll use it for salads i'll also use it to um, uh, use as lettuce wrap mozzarella with tomatoes Although I don't buy a whole heck of a lot of cheese out here just because uh, cheese out here in Thailand is usually not very good and it's usually pretty damn expensive. And so I end up eating other things. I eat whatever is cheap to honestly tell the truth. It's not that I can't afford it. It's just that since I'm coming and going all the time, what's the point of paying quadruple price for a steak when I can wait to go, to go back home and have a steak back home that is better and it's, you know, a quarter of the price. On the flip side of that, um, chicken and pork are ridiculously cheap, uh, and even little chicken wings. They um, usually don't have mature chickens here. They uh, sell a lot of chicken that's uh, pretty small, but they're pretty inexpensive and cheap. And so I do a lot of chicken wing cooking and you know marinating uh, with all along with pork stir fry and chicken stir fry. I just pretty much eat whatever is cheap. And uh, the meat is so inexpensive that uh, a lot of my dishes are usually chicken or beef or chicken or pork if um, I'm, you know, adding some sort of protein into my stir fry, and my barbecue. Uh, speaking about barbecue, um, one of the cheapest things out here are these tiny little pork ribs, spare ribs, the really tiny ones. And uh, my buddies, my American friends here love barbecue. So... What I typically do is I take these little pork ribs and I'll just cook them on the charcoal grill and uh, I have a Coleman and I have uh, a couple other Webers and I just slow cook them first thing in the morning and um, it's just amazing how, how well they turn out here and these things cost almost nothing at the store so I'll just buy a couple bags full of those uh, pork square ribs and just uh, cook them over the uh, on and off over the charcoal grills and over to the other side and just kind of let them smoke away but yeah um, out here I just buy whatever is inexpensive <clears throat> and 
as I'm doing this, it feels like this these pods have actually dried out a little bit. It's kind of weird. I mean, this one here is pretty moist, but the other ones, yeah, it's just funny how it's. Um, I'm gonna wet these down again to honestly tell you the truth. Uh, not, and I'll lightly cover them. Yeah, like this one here on the side here, that one's pretty kind of dry. Crazy. And for some reason, if these things don't um, sprout, I'm honestly probably not going to do it again just because I don't have a lot of time here for these to grow. I really, you know, could have planted this uh, yesterday, but I was lazy. But uh, that right there is what's going on with the, um, the lettuce leaf. So let me kind of give you a brief overview of what's going on here. So this is the bathroom area that's uh, unfinished. Uh, this is kind of a work in progress. This bathroom didn't really turn out the way it was supposed to turn out, but uh, that's another <laughs> that's another video, another story. So here's the front door, some sort of scorpion lock front door. It's really a very heavy structural door. Not exactly sure all the ins and outs of that, but I can program it so that way uh, there's a passcode for the maid that comes in. There's a passcode for the um, cleaning person or the uh, cleaning person uh, who's going to come here and service the AC units. I can set it up on different timers and different uh, days and different uh, structures and they'll have their own separate codes. Now going over here, this is the main living area. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary. this is the kitchen area. As you can see, all the wires and piping. There's my Samsung Family Hub refrigerator that hasn't been uh, installed yet along with my uh, two uh, um, uh, smart feature uh, Bosch, Bosch uh, dishwashers. So this area here is the living room area. I'm gonna think about using this wall here for a TV or projection. And then coming through here as we walk through the kitchen, um, this is where most of the natural light occurs. And as you can see, kind of the brightness as we come on. Uh, I gotta be careful here because there's actually, uh, there's no window here, it's being glazed. And so it's a whole empty spot right here. And uh, here's a little bit of view of the water so this area here is going to be a little coffee area I'm gonna have a long tall narrow uh, table right here with chairs looking out uh, it gets an, a lot of natural light here I'm gonna see put the seeds um, I'll put a few of, of the seeds uh, the Jiffy Pete pellets out here so that way they're you know, getting plenty of sunshine from the get-go and we'll see exactly how they sprout and how long, how well the stems and the uh, young um, seeds end up maturing into the plant and see exactly how it turns out. The rest of those I'll keep in the dark corner because that's typically how I do it. I usually will let them um, sprout uh, in a kind of a dark area and then gradually move them into more sunlight. But... Um, I'll give it a couple different tries here. The fact that there's no window there and it's a little breezy there, that's kind of why I'm thinking about splitting up how many I'm gonna put in it in a couple different areas. Um, there is some sunlight that comes out of this first balcony. And so I might actually put some like over here in the corner. As you can see, it's kind of a little bit dark over there. But anyways, uh, here's the actual main door that <laughs> is not a door going into the living room. Um, Behind me is the bal uh, is another balcony, um, but uh, over here is the bedroom itself. I get some natural light over here uh, in the morning, but I don't think it's long enough for it to grow any basil and uh, uh, lettuce leaf basil. And so what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to have to move everything over there to the living room. As you can see that glare out there that's where a majority of the sun is. Today's a cloudy day so it's uh, hard to show you exactly where the rays are coming from but uh, 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 believe me uh, when I say that it's coming from over there in that corner. So what I'll do is I'll move the trays, half of, the, half of them will, uh, I'll keep over probably down here in this corner and the other half I'll go ahead and move over to where I get the most sunshine for most of the day and even today with a really cloudy day 
it's making me sweat because it's still always so bright out here and so uh, the glare is pretty strong here and so on a sunny day there's going to be a lot of sunshine coming through here and uh, I'll see exactly how well the basil leaf grows uh, with, uh, with it getting direct sunlight but that's a little bit about uh, planting the um, lettuce leaf basil and the Genovasi basil I'll be back in touch uh, once the buckets and the perlite comes. So I ordered some on Lazada, which is a little bit better version of Alibaba. I went ahead and purchased a five gallon bucket. And now that I think about it, I probably should grab a second one so I can go ahead and mix solution in, in, in another one. I bought two different kinds of solution because I didn't want to try to import that through my suitcases <laughs> going through a couple different countries. But I did order a couple different brands, and I'll, I'll have once they could get here, I'll ask my uh, Thai buddies exactly how to translate and see if exactly if this is gonna work. And then I also bought the Perlite. I already have the paint strainer bags and everything that I brought over here, so those are good to go. So as soon as that stuff starts arriving, I'll go ahead and at least do the prep work on the buckets. I know some of you have sent me emails and, and asked me, hey, can you actually, instead of telling us what you did, can you actually just do a long video and show us you putting in, uh, drilling the, the hole with a saw hole, putting in the perlite in the paint strainer bag, uh, bag within the five gallon bucket and show us how you did that. So I'll do that this time and so that way you'll see exactly what's going on. But uh, I've got to run to the store so I'm going to let you guys go and I'll be back in touch with you guys. Bye bye.